name is Joshua Jones and welcome to another educational video brought to you by Android Corporation. Today I'm here to discuss the question, what is a bandpass filter? So let's start with the basic shape of a bandpass filter. And it's exactly as it sounds too. A band, it's passed. So there's a band of light that you wish to pass the light through and then block everything else. So first thing, most important, is center wavelength. That is the center at which the band is gonna transmit. And then the next specification, simplest, is called the bandwidth, or otherwise known as full width, half, max. Now that's the full width at half the peak T, which is approximately to be about right here. And that'll be your bandwidth. And your peak T is extrapolated over here, something like 90% T. So you have your peak T, peak transmission, your center wavelength, and your bandwidth for your full width half max. So that's the basic look of a bandpass filter, but there can be many shapes with the bandpass filter. So in the Andover Corporation catalog around page 13 or 14, we've labeled filter types. Filter type one through six being one cavity, two cavity, three, four, five, and six. And then also filter type seven, eight, nine, and 10, which are MDM type filters or metal dielectric metal. A one cavity filter can sometimes be referred to as a spike filter. A single cavity would look like this. Or even maybe broader, but you can see the slow sloping edges and when I say cavity, that comes down to the optical design. That's what I'm talking about. That's the amount of, um, a cavity is a bandwidth defined optical design parameter. And as you add cavities in the optical design, which, you know, think of it as chunks of layers. So you have a cavity, another cavity, another cavity, and it repeats itself, it's a pattern. And the more re repetition in that pattern, you don't necessarily change the bandwidth, but you do change the steepness of size. Now you'll see in the catalog that we've defined the widths at different points to identify the steepness of the sides. So we have your 90%, and we also have your 10%, 1%, 0.1, and so on. And what it shows is the factor of your bandwidth that you'll have. So at 90% T, you may have your full width half max multiplied by 0.9. And then at your 10% point, you could have your full width half max times, say a factor of 3.5 or something. That would depend on the bandwidth and how many cavities. So as we shape the number of cavities in a bandpass design, will pull in steeper and steeper edges. The one I've drawn here represents a, a typical three to five cavity design. Uh, once you get to steeper edges, I won't be able to draw exactly how that looks, but you can see the factors in the catalog. Now, this full width half max ha has certain categories you have wide band, which could be anywhere from usually 10 nanometers or greater would be your wide bandwidths. And even as much as a thousand nanometers wide. You, anywhere from lower than 10 to be considered narrow bands. So you have your wide band, narrow band, and then you even have, we're gonna say one nanometer less, we're gonna call those ultra narrow bands. 
So the one through six cavity designs can fit into this realm depending on what you want for your steep edges, what you want for your wavelength. You're still gonna have a center wavelength, but the MDMs have more of a Gaussian shape to them. And they're usually wider. They can be 10 nanometers, um, 50, maybe 80 nanometers. Those are some typical bandwidths, but it looks more like this. And that's advantageous in a lot of ways. Um, let's say you have a device that has some 3D imaging or 3D modeling, or you're doing face recognition or something. Your mathematical algorithm that is going to take your data and analyze is looking for a center peak. And a mathematical model to identify a center peak is much easier when there's only one peak. Now, multi-cavity designs, the tops of the filters could have something like this. And then your mathematical model would find these like local peaks that may be at different levels. It'll confuse it, it won't be very accurate. Um, they're also in advantageous in other ways, tend to be lower cost, you know, wide, wider bands, you know, it, it depends on your application on exactly how you're going to um, specify whether you want one, two, three, five, six cavities and MDM. But go back to the beginning, most typical is a three cavity, 10 nanometer wide band pass filter, very industry standard, machine vision, astronomy, anything. 10 million wide band pass filter is pretty standard.